Hi, so I'm making this video as a flow on from my previous video, uh, the one where we were discussing helpful debt and unhelpful debt. This video is talking to people who want to push on with the helpful debt, want to push on with investing um, and increasing their, their worth as, um, as an investor. Now, this is not a comment on investment styles. There's lots of different styles. There's investing for cash flow, there's investing for capital gains, there's investing for trading and flipping purposes and the like. This is not a comment on any of those. This is a discussion about, um, about leverage. So, you start off with a goal of buying a house and you, you, you save your deposit and that might be through savings. KiwiSaver, gifting from family, um, you know, investing in shares and then selling up and using the deposit to buy a property or whatever it is, you've worked really, really hard to come up with your deposit. The hardest part about investing is taking that first step onto the ladder. Um, once you um, purchase the property, you've got your deposit. So this pie here, I've got a little handy. My, I've run out of whiteboard markers, so I have to use paper. Um, I've got my pie graph here. This is your property, and this is your deposit. This is this is called equity. This is the piece that you own, and the rest of it is debt. Now, it's it is almost reckless to rely on capital gain but that being said over the past 10 years from quarter one this year to quarter one 2010 going back your purchasing power so what you bought for one dollar um in housing terms um in 2010 um you're paying a dollar 84 for um quarter one of 2020 and back again, 10 years prior to that again, um, it was $2.09. So it, it all but doubles uh, every 10 years. So what you're buying um, in 2000 for $170,000 um, in 2010 would be worth $355,000. Um, and in 2010 would be three hundred fifty-five. dollars By the time you reach 2020, it's $653,000. What you paid for it stays the same. And what you borrowed to pay for it stays the same. And therefore, as your property changes in value and you pay down debt through your principal and interest repayments, your equity position grows. And suddenly your LVL, your loan to value ratio changes as well, even though the debt remains the same. Your percentage of debt to the total value of, of your asset um, changes. And this is where leverage comes in. So suddenly you might have an LVR of 60%, meaning that, and you can go on your owner occupied up to 80%. So that means there's a surplus here that you could take out and use as a deposit over here on an investment property. So suddenly, uh, between the two, you have a, a, an LVR in line with um, Reserve Bank guidelines. But you now have two get two assets capital gaining. And then over time, this one here will increase in value. And this one will continue to increase in value. And it will continue to do so. And the debt that you originally had will decrease through your principal and interest repayments. And the value of the property will increase, whether that's in line with inflation or in line with market trends. But suddenly, your equity position has improved. And your debt position is improving because you're paying it down through your mortgage repayments via rent and via your salary. And suddenly, that step onto the ladder has propelled you to continue in a much faster way. Um, and your deposit doesn't necessarily have to come through saving. It can come through equity, so long as you meet servicing requirements. And that will lead on to the topic of my next video, which is about cash flow. Um, because as a property investor myself, I know that equity doesn't pay the bills, cash flow does, and that is what is going to restrict you further. So hopefully that's a bit of, that's a bit of an understanding about what leveraging is when it comes to buying property um, and give you a bit of a nice visual with my um, homemade piece of paper and, and pen. Okay, there you go.